I did a video recently on whether Beautify was production ready or not. And so with that in mind, I thought I'd go and look at suitable alternatives in case I run into issues with Beautify not being production strength ready yet. And one of those that I wanted to look at was the Quasar library. So let's go and have a look at Quasar and see if we can use that for our contact form instead. So let's jump in and get Quasar installed. So the first thing that we need is to install the Quasar Vite plugin as a dev dependency. We then need the Quasar and Quasar Extras NPM packages. And over in our Nuxt config, we can import Quasar from the Quasar Vite plugin. We can go and sort out the CSS. So let's get to the end of our CSS collection. And we need Quasar Extras material icons if you want to use material icons. And we're also going to use SAS to compile the Quasar SAS file. And we're going to add a, a file into our assets styles folder for that. So we'll see that in a bit. We need to add some configuration into the rest of the build pipeline for Nuxt. So we need to make sure that we transpile Quasar. We need to make sure that we turn off debugging for Vite. And we need to tell Quasar where our SAS variables are going to be. So again, we're going to create a Quasar variables SAS file, which we'll do in a bit. And we're going to put that in our asset styles folder. So let's go and deal with those sas files so in our assets folder let's create another folder called styles and let's create the quasar.sas file and inside here we've just got a couple of imports so we're going to import the quasar variables sas file that we're going to create in a minute and we're also going to import the main um, Quasar SAS file after the variables. So we define our variables, we import the main SAS file, and then that will all get compiled up. So let's go and add that Quasar variables. And inside here is where you can just define any of the Quasar variables. So we're overriding primary with our site coloring. Um, but you can add in any Quasar variables that are defined on the Quasar website to override any colors that you need. So let's save those and close those out because we don't need those anymore. We need to go and add a plugin into our plugins. So let's add a Quasar client as it's client side only plugin in. And what we need in here is couple of imports to import from Quasar and also we need our define Nuxt plugin. So let's go and define our Nuxt plugin, give it some Quasar options just by importing the components that we've defined and imported up there. And then we go and add the Quasar component library into our Nuxt app and give it the options that we want to specify. Let's save that out. So now let's come over to our page, our contact us page, which at the moment is just default boilerplate stuff. And let's add a form into this div here. So first thing that we need is this Q form. So let's get that in there and save that. And as you can see, we need a submit form method or function to be able to call when this form is submitted. We'll get to the functions in a while. So I'm going to add in our usual input field type for capturing the, the name of the person that's trying to contact us. So again, we've got our form data that we usually have. If you've looked through some of the other videos on contact form 
we have our, our form data area. We've got our busy flag that sets whether or not this form's been submitted. We've got some validation rules that we need to run. So this field is required, so it should run that. And we've also got here some validation that's going on. So we're saying here that our validation is on demand. So we're effectively taking control of the validation. And the reason behind that is exactly the same reason that we saw in the Vutify 3 library is that by default, these validations um, rules don't necessarily run when you tab in and out of fields and that kind of thing. So we're taking control of that and therefore we can handle things like the blur to call validate when we leave the field or if the model value changes, we can also call the validate the field. So we're going to add in a validate field function that's going to handle our validation of all of our fields for us. But we'll we'll come to that. So let's just paste in the input for the email, which is exactly the same style as the name field. And then we'll do likewise for the inquiry. So again, inquiry, exactly the same idea. We're validating on demand, except this is a text area type. And then last but not least, we actually need our button to actually submit the form. So let's add that in. And again, that's using our is the field is the form valid or not to determine what color and whether it's enabled or not. So let's go and look at the methods that we need to add. We need a field to handle whether the form is being submitted at this particular point in time. We also need the object to store our data and our errors in. So that's our form data. And then I've got another object here called field validity, which we have a property in for each of the fields on the form. And that tells us whether or not that particular field is in error at the moment or not. So that's the purpose of this and we'll use that further down Then I've got a computed property for the valid field. So this works its way through the field validity. The first element that it finds that's false will stop that and it will return false to say that we've got a field that is in error. And so therefore the whole form is invalid at that point. So let's add our validate field method in and see what that's doing. So that takes the field that we actually want to validate and the element name that we can use inside of our field validity object. So let's just jump back up and see what that looks like up here. So validate field takes the inquiry field itself and the name of the property that we want it to populate. So for inquiry, it's inquiry for email, it's the email. Okay, so that's going to map to these particular fields inside the field validity. Then we've got our submit form that sets the busy flag to true to say that the forms being submitted sleeps for 5000 milliseconds. I've added the sleep method in down here. And then eventually the last thing it does is set the busy flag back to false again. And you'll notice I've got this initialized form data here. So this is the same as a Vutify form reset. And one thing I should have done right up the top underneath where we've defined everything is actually make a call to that initially to initialize the form data. So let's go and add that initialize form data in down here. So all this is doing is resetting all the values back to initial values that we want them to have. So it's initializing the data so that they're all set to initial values. It's clearing out any errors in there and it's also clearing out the field validity values so that they're all set to false. So it's initializing our form into a default state is all that's doing. And it's separated out into a separate method so that we can call it from both the submit form and also initially when we load the form onto the page. And then last but not least, we've got our usual validation functions that we have for Beautify as well. So required returns that you need to input the field or a valid email address if it's not a valid email address.
And the last thing that we need to add is just some styling in there. So let's add that. Let's run this up. And you will see some SAS errors about things like this that are going to be deprecated in the next version of SAS. So the Quasar team will still have some work to do, obviously, to make that compliant. But it does work. OK, so that's up and running. And so if I click in to one of these, I can click in, click out, and I get the icon from the MDI icons library and I get my validations running. So as I click in and click out of all of these, my validations are functioning correctly. And if I fill in some details, and if I fill in an invalid email address, it then validates that that's an invalid email address. Fill that in, give it a valid email address, kind of, almost. And you can see that then my button becomes enabled down here and it's been styled correctly from my SAS variables that I specified. So if I just get rid of that again, you'll see that goes back to grey. That, And then if I send this in, I get the busy flag working. So that's specifying that correctly. And then the form resets, calling our initialized form. And we go back to our default state again. So that is working with Quasar exactly as we want it to work for our contact form. So that gives you an alternative library that you can use if you're having fun with Beautify and things aren't working. Perhaps maybe take a look at Quasar. And with that, I want to thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.